Greetings, church family. Happy Sabbath. Today we're looking beyond problems, beyond tragedy, for the blessing that God has in store. Our book of reading today is the book of Ruth, and it begins with Naomi and Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite widow, and she followed her mother-in-law back to Israel. And beyond the problems and perplexities, there were blessings. Naomi and Ruth. Before Israel had a king, judges kept law and order. It was during this time that a drought hit the country and people had little to eat. So a man from Bethlehem, his wife Naomi, their two sons moved to the neighboring country of Moab. Not long after they moved, the husband got sick and died. Even through the drought, there was hope. Even though the drought had ended back home, Naomi decided to stay in Moab. Her two sons married two local girls, Orpah and Ruth, and about 10 years later, these men got sick and died. So Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws were alone and without support. Naomi decided to go back home. Orpha and Ruth started out with her on the way. Naomi urged them to stay in their own country. She prayed with them and then said, May the Lord be as kind to you as he has been to me. May he give each of you a husband and a family. Then she kissed them and said goodbye. The young woman cried and said, we want to go with you. Naomi answered, why would you want to go with me? In my country, you'd be foreigners. You'd be better off here. Besides, I have no more sons for you to marry. It's hard to say goodbye, but you're still young. I'm old and all alone. They all cried. Then Orpha decided to go back home. She kissed Naomi, said goodbye, but not Ruth. Naomi said to her, you need to go back to where people know you. Don't come with me. You'll be in a country with different customs, and everyone will know that you're a foreigner. Ruth said, don't ask me to leave you. I want to go where you go and live where you live. Your people will be my people. And your God, my God, may the Lord punish me if anything but death separates me from you. When Naomi saw how determined Ruth was, she allowed her to come. When the two got to Bethlehem, the whole town was excited. The women said, Naomi is back home. She answered, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, because life has been very hard on me. I left here with a husband and two sons, and now three of them, all of them, all three have died, and I am all alone. Naomi was finally back home, and Ruth was with her. It was the time when the crops were being harvested, Naomi had a relative whose name was Boaz. He was well respected and owned a large farm. One day Ruth said, let me go out to the fields and pick what the harvesters have left for the poor. Naomi replied, that's a good idea. We're almost out of food. So Ruth went out to one of the fields, which happened to belong to Boaz, Later that day, Boaz went to see how the harvesters were doing. 
He said to them, God bless all of you for doing such a good job. And they said, God bless you too, Boaz. And then he said, who is the young woman who was picking up the harvest leftovers? The foreman said, her name is Ruth. She's Naomi's daughter-in-law from the country of Moab. She came early this morning, has been working all day. Once in a while, she came under our canopy to get out of the sun, but that's all. Then Boaz called Ruth over and said, young lady, let me give you some advice. This is a big field. Don't end up in the same corner by yourself. Stay where my servant girls are. I told my men not to hurt you because you're a foreigner. When you get thirsty, get a drink of water from our water supply. Ruth bowed and said, thank you for being kind to me. But why should you be so kind to a foreigner? Boaz said, they told me you're Naomi's daughter-in-law and how willing you were to come with her to look after her. May the Lord repay you for your kindness. May our God, whom you love, bless you in all you do. Ruth said, yes, sir. You've talked to me gently as if I were one of your servants. I feel safe here. Thank you. At mealtime, Boaz called Ruth, come and join us. Get out of the sun. Have something to eat. Ruth came down and sat down and ate until she was satisfied. What was left, she saved for Naomi. After she went back to work, Boaz said to his men, if it gets too close to what's being harvested, don't scold her. And when she gets near where you're harvesting, let some extra drop for her. So Ruth worked all day. Then she beat out the kernels from the stalks and had enough to fill a 25-pound sack. She carried it home. Naomi couldn't believe it. Ruth also gave her the food that she had saved from lunch that Boaz gave to her. Naomi thanked her and asked her, whose field did you work in today? Whoever it was, he was certainly kind to you. May the Lord bless him for it. Then Ruth said his name was Boaz. Naomi replied, Boaz? Why, that's our distant relative. Bless him for being kind to us. Surely the Lord guided you to his field. Ruth said, he said, keep coming back until the harvest is done. Naomi said, the Lord is watching over us. Keep going back, but stay close to the servant girls as he told you. So the next day, Ruth went back and stayed close to the servant girls as she had been told. She also worked in other fields that Boaz owned until the whole harvest was finished. All this time, she continued to live with Naomi. One day, Naomi said to Ruth, I need to find a husband for you. You're still young enough to have a family of your own. Boaz isn't married, and he's a distant relative, so he's the first choice. This evening, the men will be threshing out the harvest, so listen to me. Here's what I want you to do to thank Boaz for his kindness. Late this afternoon, when you come back from the field, bathe, put on your best clothes, go to where they're doing the threshing, but don't let Boaz see you. When the men, men finish their work, they'll sit down to eat, then they'll go to sleep. Watch where Boaz goes after he's asleep. Go quietly to where he is. Lift the bottom corner of the blanket and lie by his feet. During the night, his feet will touch you and he'll wake up when he sees you. He'll know that I sent you. That's our custom, Ruth answered. If you say so, after work, she got ready and went to the threshing place. She watched the men eat and then lie down to sleep. 
She saw Boaz go to the other side of the big pile of grain and lie down. After he fell asleep, she went quietly over, picked up the corner of the blanket and lay at his feet. During the night, Boaz stretched. His feet touched something. He woke up. So did Ruth. He whispers, what are you doing here? She answered, Naomi said, this is the way to let you know that I'm a widow, eligible to marry. Since you're a distant relative, you need to know first. Boaz reached for his robe, put it over Ruth's shoulders and said, the Lord bless you. You love Naomi and you've cared for her ever since you came. You could have stayed in your own country and gotten married there. Don't worry. What you have done is our custom. Besides, people know what a good woman you are. But there's a closer relative who's not married. In the morning, I'll check with him and see if he knows you. If he doesn't want to marry you, I'll be happy to be your husband. Then I'll take care of you. And Naomi, here's an extra blanket. Cover up and get some sleep. Then Ruth lay down and prayed. Before dawn, she got up to leave. Boaz whispered, don't tell anyone you were here. Now let's put some grain in your shawl as a gift to Naomi. Then he tied it up, put it on her shoulder. When she got home, Naomi was already up. She helped Ruth with the bundle and said, tell me what happened. Ruth told her everything. By the way, she said, this grain is a gift from him to you. Naomi replied, praise the Lord. This means Boaz will not rest until he sees that other relative today. That morning, Boaz went to the town gate where the city fathers meet to do the town's business. When he saw the other relative coming, he called him over and said, I need to talk to you. Then he asked the city fathers to witness what was being discussed. He said to the other relative, Naomi has come back home. She's put a property up for sale. Since you're a closer relative than I am, you have first choice to buy it. If you want it, the city fathers can legalize the sale. If not, I will buy it. The man said, I'll buy it. Boaz replied, you should know that Naomi is selling on the condition that whoever buys her property must marry her daughter-in-law. The man said, forget it. That means I wouldn't really own the property. If I married Ruth and we had a son, it would belong to him and his family. If you want to buy it, Boaz, go right ahead. In those days when men bought and sold property, one would give his sandal to the other to make it legal. So the man gave his sandal to Boaz in the presence of the city fathers. Boaz took it and said, Today I'm buying Naomi's property and promise to take care of her. I will also marry Ruth. Then he gave the Samuel back. After the sandal was returned, the city fathers and people who had stopped to watch said to Boaz, we have witnessed it. The property is now yours. May the Lord bless you and Ruth and give you many children. So Boaz bought the property and married Ruth. The Lord blessed them and their first baby was a boy. The neighbor said to Naomi, praise the Lord, he has given you a grandson. Now your family line will not die out and you will be well taken care of. Ruth loves you and she herself is worth seven grandsons. Naomi took the baby in her arms and loved it as if it were her own. The neighbors suggested they name that baby Obed, which they did. He grew up and became the father of Jesse, who became the father of King David. 
So the family line started with Judah, the son of Jacob, and goes all the way down to Boaz, Obed, Jesse, and David. Dear Lord, as we look beyond the problems, as we look for the blessing, you have promised to bless and keep us. You've promised to cause your face to shine upon us. You've caused the countenance to shine on us and be gracious unto us and give us peace. Lord, we claim those promises and we ask that you'll bless every home and family represented here and give us all the blessings that we need and that we seek. In the name of Jesus, amen.